Hey guys, um, some of you guys asked for me to talk about ion channels, so that's what I'm going to focus on today. Um, these ion channels are going to be specific to the neuronal axon. So um, this is how an axon or an action potential is propagated through the axon and how it's initiated. But for now, we're just going to focus on the molecular mechanism of sodium flowing into the cell and potassium flowing out of the, out of the cell and how that flow creates the action potential down the axon or how it propagates down the axon. So to begin with, um, this segment that I'm showing here is a segment of the axon of a neuron. So think of it that way. Um, to be more specific, these channels are mostly focused in what's called the nota ranvier, which is the segments that are not covered by the myelin sheath. Um, so it's like the segments in between uh, the myelin and parts um, so pretty much they're not myelinated, pretty much. So, um, this right here is showing the cell membrane of the axon. And in blue, we're showing the sodium-potassium channels, uh, just sodium channels. And the red, ch the red channels here are showing the potassium channels, K+, plus and Na+. Plus. So what happens when an action potential is triggered? These ion channels are voltage-gated. So they're called voltage-gated ion channels. So you might see an abbreviation that says VGIC. All that means is voltage-gated ion channel. Now, what that really means, um, which I will talk about more about how an action potential is first summated and stuff like that, but um, once a certain threshold is reached in the cell membrane, it triggers these voltage-gated ion channels to open. Uh, more specifically, it causes the sodium channel to open. So, at a normal cell, the resting potential is going to be somewhere around negative 50 millivolts within the cell. So, what happens during an action potential, um, the, and outside the cell is usually a lot more positive, obviously. And what happens during an action potential is that the cell membrane's voltage gets raised past a certain threshold. Now, it depends on what kind of cell it is and what the threshold actually is, but it's usually somewhere around negative 20. It could be the threshold. It could be, you know, higher or lower. But once the threshold is reached, it's going to trigger this action, uh, it's going to trigger this ion channel here for sodium, and this voltage get ion channel is going to open up. So pretty much what's going to happen as a result, um, I lost my blue marker. What's going to happen is that these sodium ions are going to start flowing into the cell and they're going to get flooded. Now, what's going to happen when you have a positive ion flowing into a negatively charged cell? Well, it's going to cause the cell to become more positive, or the membrane to become more positive. So therefore, instead of negative 50, now we're looking somewhere as about positive, let's say, 65 millivolts. Notice that depolarization. Now the charge outside the cell membrane, inside the cell membrane, are what's called depolarized. Pretty much what that means is that there is no difference in charge between inside and outside the cell membrane. When something is polarized, it means it has two ends or two different charges. That's just terminology for you. Um, so here we are. Sodium is pummeling through through the cell. It's flowing in at a constant rate, and the sodium channels is still open. Now after a little while, um, the sodium channels are going to close up. So they're going to close up, no more sodium is going to come in. Now what's going to happen next gets very interesting. And then we're going to see um, potassium channels. So here we have potassium inside the cell already. And what's going to happen is that this is going to go out. So K plus is flowing out. Now you might be asking yourself, what's going on? Now, doing an action potential, this is pretty much what it looks like. So here we have a simulation of whatever kind, and then we have a rising phase, which is this right here, and then we have a falling phase, and then notice that I'm going below the resting potential here, it's called hyperpolarization, and then I go back to resting. So this is resting potential, RP, and this is resting potential, RP. So here is the rising phase, I'm going to abbreviate it as R um, phase, and this is the falling phase, F phase. And this right here, notice that it's going below the resting potential. 
this, this right here is called a hyperpolarization. I don't know if you can read that from there or not. But um, this is called hyperpolarization. It's when it overshoots the resting potential until it comes right back again to the resting potential. So, let's focus here on the rising phase. Um, we have a resting potential and all of a sudden we get a stimulus, it triggers an active potential, the cell is good to go. So what's going to happen, sodium ions are going to start flowing into the cell because these voltage gated sodium channels are going to open up. And once they open up, sodium channels are going to start flooding into the cell membrane, they're going to cause a depolarization, which is going to raise um, the voltage of the cell, hence the depol. And then, so this is going to be associated with the rising phase. So this is Na, sodium, flowing into the cell. And we see we reach the top right here. And then from here on out, this is where the sodium channel is going to close. So here, sodium channel, no more sodium is flowing into the cell. And then it is followed by what's called the falling phase. Now what happens during the falling phase is that once the sodium channels are closed, it's going to cause the potassium channels to open. Now the potassium channels are more, they're, typically in biology, potassium channels are more open than sodium channels are. Sodium channels are usually some kind of voltage gate, or they have some other mechanism that they're usually closed unless the cell really needs it. Potassium channels, however, they're a little bit less regulated, they kind of flow more easily out of the cell. In this case, um, they are voltage-gated channels. So from here, the falling phase, we have potassium. As potassium is flowing out of the cell to its Nertz value, and by the way, um, if you guys are studying what Nertz values are, I will be making a video and with some sample calculations of how to calculate the Nertz and what the, um, what the overall big picture is about the Nertz value. This is very important when you're learning this stuff right here. Um, nurse value is everything in, in your calculations. So I will be making a video on that, so stay tuned. Um, so back to this. We have potassium channels. Potassium channels are flowing out of the cell. As they flow, this is going to be correlated with the falling phase, as we see here. Now what's going to happen, it's going to keep flowing, keep flowing, until we have a hyperpolarization. And then eventually, it's going to balance out. And what's going to happen, this is going to close up again, and then we're back to resting potential. And only at this point, at the resting potential here, can another um, stimulus trigger another action potential. So what happens during, so this entire thing that I'm showing here is occurring at one stimulus. Now what happens is kind of cool with the sodium channel. Once the sodium channel, the voltage gated ion channel, gets triggered, um, it opens. Sodium comes in, flows in, everything's perfect. And then, that's called the active open state. So, there are three phases of this ion channel. There is the, so here's the sodium ion channel. We have, number one, it's called the active open state. Only in this state can this ion be triggered by stimulus to cause an action potential. And it's very important why this is. I'll explain that soon. The second confirmation of this ion channel is called the um, inactive open state. Pretty much what that means no more sodium ions are going to be coming into the cell. Um, there's a block, sodium ions are not able to freely come into the cell anymore. And then we have the three, it's called the active closed. Now, it is only during, I'm going to put a star next to this, it's only during this confirmation that a stimulus can, can trigger the action potential. And the reason why this is so important is that this is the reason why we have what's called unidirectional flow down the axon to the axon terminal. So I'm going to get rid of this picture here. So here we have, I'm going to draw an axon for you guys. Tip. 
terrible looking axe on. I mean, uh, no, no, but you get the idea. And then here we have the segments. So these regions right here are the myelinated regions. And this right here is called the node of Ranvier. And this is usually where we find all the ion channels, is in the node of Ranvier. Now, what's cool about this, uh, I'll explain this in cold notes. Um, anyways, so we have the sodium ion channels here, we have potassium channels here, along these nodes of Ranvier. Now, what's going to happen during these myelinated areas, it's going to cause faster, or uh, it's going to allow the electrical signal to be more efficient down the terminal. Now, back to this, at uh, the active closed state, once that channel, or in the inactive closed open state, um, it prevents a stimulus from being, from triggering an action potential. And as a result, it allows the signal to flow unidirectionally down to the axon terminal. You don't see it doing this. And the reason that is, is that once this, I'll give you a different color here, once this sodium channel, once the sodium channel opens up, it's going to flood into the cell, everything's going good, and then we have flow going in. So what happens, this ion is going to be closed. And once that's closed, these sodium ions are going to start flowing that way. And that's going to start another action potential here. And then it's going to start another action potential, and then another action potential. And it's going to keep going until we get to the vesicles, um, found the axon terminal, and I will be talking about the vesicles of the axon terminal as well, and they have different ions that are responsible. They have calcium as opposed to sodium, but that's going to be for another video. So this is the importance of the three different conformations of the sodium um, voltage-gated ion channel. The fact that it has an inactive open state where a stimulus cannot trigger an actual potential is very significant in that it causes unidirectional flow down to the axon terminal. That, that way, you're not seeing the signal going that way, it's only going this way. And the reason, just to, um, just to, you know, for clarification, is because once this first ion channel opens for sodium, um, it's gonna, sodium is going to come in, and then it's going to close. And then no more sodium can come in, but at the same time, so that's the inactive state, at the same time, no stimulus is affecting this sodium channel. Therefore, it's not triggering another action potential. So once this first initiates, it's going to close down. So this one can no longer be stimulated. And then it's going to cause a unidirectional flow down to the axon terminal. And as it flows down the terminal, it's going to cause action potentials each, uh, at each node of Ranvier. And it's going to just jump node to node to node until we get to the vesicles. So that is a quick and dirty version of ion channels in neurons. If you have any other questions, feel free to make a comment. Um, I will clarify any specifics that you guys have questions on. Um, anyways, hope that helped.